Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about how to build this puffy symbol and apply it onto the side of the ring shank. Are you ready? Let's get started. The technique we are going to use can apply to any pattern that you want. You might want to do some experiments first and see what you like. For the stone setting part, I have a course for specific on the stone setting. You can click on the right top corner here that will have information for you. Now that's starting finding the symbol that you like. I was using the keyword for cave painting symbol. So I can find something like a really old looking symbol there and just pick up whatever that works for you. Black and white usually work better. We're coming to the top view and use the command called picture. And then you can pick up any of the symbol that you find with black and white on it and kind of a scale it uh, after you bring in a picture, kind of scale into the size that you want. And I'm going to use the one um, on the right top corner. So that's lock this one and so we won't accidentally to click it instead of tracing with the regular curve usually they come in too smooth I'm going to use this one a uh, curve is called sketch and we are going to sketch this one so basically you are just moving your mouse without clicking anything and try to get it as close um, the outline as you want and since this is really like an organic form that doesn't have to be super exact but we can always change the uh, control point if you like it really close to what you see there so kind of moving your mouse follow the curve as close as possible and I'm going to fast forward for the whole tracing process Okay, once we are done, let's hide the background because we just want to get the reference. Notice that the beginning and the end usually is not touching. So what we wanted to do, we're going to pick up all of them, turn on the control point, and we want to use the move tool to move the very last point, snapping into the very first point. And we want to do that to all of them because we do need a closed curve in order to creating the solid. So let's pick up the very last one and snapping into the first one. This is also the point if you want to adjust any point to make it look more close to the original, you can do that. But since this is more like an organic shape, so I'm going to stay like this. However, uh, I do not like some of the kink there because we want to have a smooth uh, puffy foam. So what I like to do for the inside of this, I'm going to rebuild them and make sure the degree is 3 and I want to change to 13 or 14 so really quickly you're going to see uh, the, the shape will get a little bit smoother and then after that you can keep editing if you feel like this is not the shape that you wanted and then you can keep editing like that or maybe this is too uh, angular you want to make them rounder uh, you can continue to keep editing like that the very last one, uh, outside one, you can see this is a kink over there. We need a lot more point on this one. So let's rebuild this one. And I'm right here, we got 52 points. So I'm going to make it 54 and see what does it look like. It does make it all nice and rounded. So this doesn't have that really uh, tiny point over there. So it looks fine to me and I'm going to stay with this. After that, you can still keep editing if you feel like a certain part you want to be rounder, a certain part you want to be more pronounced, and you can still editing your point. So this is the symbol that I have. Now we have this uh, symbol curve. We are ready to turn it into the solid. I'm going to pick up those two curves, and let's go to the solid, extrude the planar curve straight, and let's take a look on the perspective. So in the perspective that we have this, I simply just want them to be about one millimeter tall. So the extruded distance is one. We don't need to have a both side. And uh, solid need to be equal, yes. And then we just hit enter. So then we have this solid. Let's do one more time with this one and do one more time with the middle one there. 
Okay, so now we have this over here. We got the basic form, but this basic form is really rigid. As you can see in the render, it doesn't look really nice. If this is on the ring, you might need to polish a lot to get it nice and round. Not only they need to look nice and round, I also want them to be more like a melting wax kind of a texture on it to make it more natural. So the way I'm going to do, I'm coming into the top view and I'm going to use the command under the surface and you have this ghost looking things called drap. So we are going to uh, using the drap command and we're gonna just draw a window right here. And you can see that this is go all the way to the bottom right here. And ideally it should be stopping on the bottom. And the reason is because we have a ring over here. So let me turn off the ring and let's do one more time. We are going to do the drap and we're gonna draw a window right here. And it's, you, as you can see, it become closer. Now, if you feel like this, Let's turn it into the render view. If you feel like this is not what you're looking for, it's too much folding right there, you may want to bump up uh, the spacing that you have. So let's delete this one. Let's do one more time. So let's use the commands called drap again. And this one, auto spacing, we want to click no. On the U, I want to do 100. On the V, I want to do 100 as well. So let's bump up the number. And uh, auto detecting uh, the depth, yes. And then let's draw a window really close to this shape. Okay, as you can see, the folding is less pronounced. And we are going to try this one. Let me move it to the side. All right, so the first make it look nicer, we are going to use the smooth command. And then you're going to have this window. You can make it smooth, like go really a lot at once, or you can move it somewhere right in the middle and try it first. And you can see that it's already rounded the edges a little bit. So we might want to do a couple of times to make it smooth. And each time it's going to smooth a little bit. Sometimes you don't want to smooth too much at once. You just want to uh, do it little by little, or you want to bump up the number going to really high, you can do that as well. So now you get something like this. Notice that on this edge here, it has some irregularity, and then so they won't look good on the printing. So what I like to do after I smooth it, I'm going to rebuild the whole thing to so give it a little bit more number. So that's, we are having 100, so I'm going to do about 120 on both U and the V. Make sure that the degree is three. Then we click OK one more time, and you can see we get something like this. Let's smooth it one more time. And you might want to play around in between here and there to get exactly the result that you want. Okay, so let's take a look on the render view, all right? So it is much better, it's a smoother, uh, as you can see compared to this one. It is not as hard edges. And we might just use this one, or you want to continue doing the smooth and rebuild. Okay, so we can keep using a smooth and smooth down a lot more and, until you find a shape that you like. Okay, so once we've done that, we're gonna come over here and coming into the side, I'm going to draw a straight line roughly about here and get it as close to the bottom as possible. And let's go ahead to use that to trim the whole bottom off. So now we will have only, uh, let's take a look on render view, we'll have only the shape here. And we're gonna use the comments code cap now that double make sure it's a close uh, solid poly surface. So this is the shape that we have over there. So I'm going to create a frame that's using the torus and let's go ahead to click on anywhere coming over here and make it closer, something like this and make it a little bit smaller. 
and I also need to have a point just drop it everywhere so let's select everybody and using the um, center align centers and you can click on anywhere so the dot the shape and also this outline now is all aligned and we want to make this a little bit closer so we'll get something like this if this is too pronounced you can move it down or you actually can move this up a little bit all right so the point is quite important here so this point is indicated where the surface is going to be so that's a reference point the command we are going to do is called splop s p l o p and then you're going to select both of this and then you're going to snapping into the point so make sure your point is on and that's snapping into the point and we're gonna draw a sphere like this okay so so you can see on our perspective there's a reference sphere over there and then we're gonna come into our ring we're gonna pick up this surface we're gonna pick up the surface and you can pick up anywhere of a surface if you would like to and you can kind of uh, draw it for whatever size that you like so now you will have this one on it let's take a look on the render view so the symbol will be on your ring hopping really nice and all you need to do is bowling union together and i would like to give a big thanks to potus31.com thank you for your donation all your donations are super important for me as a small youtuber and for the rest of you thank you for your watching i hope you enjoyed the video and please share and comment so i can reach more people see you next